Welcome back. I'm playing Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector, and we'll get started on our next multiplayer matchup. Uh, we are playing the Firecast Outpost, Strategic Command, 2,000 points. Uh, I'm playing as the Orcs, and we're going to be going against the Necrons. I think this is probably one of the hardest matchups for the Orc forces. Uh, 2,000 points uh, army size with a 80-point uh, target, and I just noticed that there's no turn limit, because uh, with the orcs, pretty much the way you win this match is that you rush the targets and then assume it's an 8-point matchup, uh, but that is not the case with it being unlimited uh, points here, because usually the necrons are going to be able to shoot you, and your main advantage is to capture points and then just kind of have your guys tank it with all their HP. So I got two weird boys, three pain boys, two storm boys, two knobs with power claws, uh, four burnas, uh, three uh, ludas with the shooty death gun, and three war bikers to hopefully get our guys in. Now, fortunately, he cannot capture that point on the very first turn, which is what I was hoping. I won't say he's coming. So we'll send these guys over this way. Now this is overall a very unpopular map. Um, I, I didn't really want it. People have asked me my opinion on it and I've been rather reluctant to give an opinion on this map thus far because I didn't, I mean, I didn't feel like for the longest period of time I've had enough matchups on it to uh, have a strong opinion. But now that I've played this map probably six or seven times, I, I do agree with the people that are pretty negative about it because it really hinders any melee-based force, and it really forces uh, you to focus on a ranged army because of how the terrain is set up. And so I am not a fan of this map as well. Um, because you set up these choke points, right? So, like on that center area here, it has a choke point on the right side, and then on the left side, you got to come around in the front there. It's so that uh, really hinders anybody that doesn't have hover infantry, and those that do can just hover right over those obstacles like it's no big deal. Or if you have jump infantry, you can get there, but again, it definitely leads you to be stuck out in the middle. And you do have some back paths and things like that here that allow you to get to this point. But then if you're focusing on the right side, again, it has that big narrow path that, again, is a major obstacle for you. So it definitely leads to um, some unfair advantage depending on which factions you use here. Now, it makes sense that they built the map since this is supposed to be a Tau fire base. And the way it's set up, you know, it definitely gives some major advantages to Tau forces. So, in that aspect, I guess it's kind of lore friendly. But, uh, it is a pretty frustrating match, uh, map, I think. I won't say he's coming. And the other, the other thing is, people have made a lot of comments that doesn't make sense, like, what's giving you cover what's not and it's like on this thing I actually ran into this issue myself on this map because I'm usually playing from the other side since uh, most I usually just create matches and then people join me so this is uh, I've only done uh, this map from this way maybe three four times so I wasn't quite sure what was cover and what wasn't, and it is uh, quite awkward at certain areas. Like you think, oh, this rock here, this is probably full cover, right? It's like, I think it's just considered like mild partial cover here. And it's like, ah, oh, shit. So it's like you can't even sit there and hide blocking this point because I thought oh this is probably enough cover that you could probably just put somebody on this point to body block it but now I'm not even sure if that's even a thing with that kind of cover here so it's like well given how much damage I've already suffered I feel like I kind of have to charge in here now what I probably should have done is brought the pain boy down there so I could be having all this bonus HP to soak up these attacks the plan. The old ways taste best. 
So in that aspect, definitely some very foolish uh, movements on my part, but I was getting pretty tilted at this point in time. And unfortunately, my heal, my heal failed. I don't have very good range because all this stuff counts as partial cover over here with those obstacles. So that lowers your accuracy even further. I'm trying to figure out how I want to position my guys so they don't get living lightninged into oblivion. Because my opponent has prudently selected uh, a lot of heavy uh, living lightning forces here. Well, if we have to, we'll move. Lures have the best shooters. The old ways is best. What's the plan? And I'm just trying to decide how I want to position these guys here, but it's pretty obvious that they're going to end up dying. So it's like, well, maybe my Ludas can kind of carry me if I can get everybody else over here. But again, you're going to have to go through all these choke points, and it's like, how the hell am I going to get my guys over here to get these guys into capturing this point because that whole wall there is going to obstruct my ability to get in there and I've got to cross that narrow bridge to get in here now it's great when you're saying playing the tower and you can position your guys on that bridge to you know obstruct the view but yeah it's uh definitely leads to some shenanigans here What's the plan? Ready to saw bones. Rocket packs ready to go. Something to burn. All right, I'll just move him over here, I guess. And I guess we'll start shifting these guys over to the side. Gain warmer, warmer. Come over here. We'll and we'll try to move the pain boy over a little bit to start buffing the HP, but for some reason it's not given the bonus HP. But yeah, all the living lightning allows you to really mess up the orcs. Kind of your main advantage there is if you have the orcs. Why didn't those other Luda shoot? That's kind of weird. The main advantage that the orcs have is, you know, if you can just get them to survive and get them into combat, then that'll allow you to take advantage, but if you can't get into combat, then that doesn't allow you to do it, so this is definitely a very orc unfriendly map here. And then he's got all these hover units, so you can see he just, it's not even an issue for him to move around and capture points and get guys into cover and everything, but for us we're like stuck way to the fuck back here. So maybe if you do more of like a flash gets instead of the burner boys and just have everybody shoot in, but again, just to how this map is set up, not very advantageous here for us. And I can definitely see the frustration that people have had with this map. So it's like I'm trying to move our uh, 
bikers over to the right side because I'm like if I can at least get the biker over there I should be able to hold that right side because the scarab swarm should have trouble killing it. But it's like, alright, what the hell am I going to do here? So I will run you down here. He's got, you know, decent baseline evasion here. And again, these guys can't really move anywhere. It's like, let's heal. Rocket packs ready to go. It's like, I guess I've taken so much damage that I just gotta try to go for the victory point victory, but I still hadn't noticed that it was unlimited turns at this point in time, so going back, uh, I feel rather foolish about that. I didn't realize it was unlimited turns. I was just assumed it was like the 8 point, which most are, and unfortunately that heal also failed, so now I just killed one of my models. What's your own fire? I do think it would be cool. I know I've mentioned this in the past, but if that f heal fails, like it gives you like some sort of enraged ab ability or something like that, where it increases the movement or increases damage, some I guess something like that. So it's not like a total loss of a unit's turn. So it's like I've got to have these guys here to do something for me because I am just losing. So it's like, all right, we're gonna do a hail mary. I bring him down to here, but I think that's a bad spot to move him because now he probably has some decreased accuracy through the cover, and unfortunately he's got 20 HP left. So it's like, well, how far am I going to bring these guys? like I definitely got to get some kills so I bring this guy down to I'm like where do I want to bring him do I bring him here do I bring him over one and again I was worried about the living lightning so I bring him here and it's like oh shit my chance to hit the plasma mancer is shitty right now because I've got partial cover I could shoot into the annihilation barge I get to kill here So I'm just not quite sure how I want to position these guys here. And then with the cover there, I'm not sure that he's going to be able to shoot into the Annihilation Barge. I don't want to move in with my uh, Storm Boys, obviously. So that's 70. So I shoot there. And it's like, well, I can get a guarantee kill here. I could guarantee kill those guys as well, but I don't know that really makes a lot of sense. I really got to drop this Plasma Mancer so he doesn't drop a nuke on my face. So ultimately it's like, alright, we'll shoot here and attack the Plasma Mancer with the increased, rain, or the increased attack, but had I really thought that through, I would have put him in a different position no, and he would have had a better chance to hit. It's like he left this place open, so we'll just run these guys down to body block this position for us. Right, this spike over here. To try to increase the chance of you doing some stuff. In retrospect, I probably should have verified that the war bike wouldn't have got a shot there. But it's like he's too far away with everybody else, unfortunately. They're just kind of keeping the weird boy back. So it's like, alright, well... Hopefully with all the additional attacks and things you should get the kill. But we just missed. So had I had a better positioning there, I would have killed that plasma monster. So it's like, shit, now I've got my two Ludas together so he can drop a nuke on me. And I can't kill those guys. So it's becoming rapidly obvious that these are not working out well for me. And it's like, well, do I just move everybody forward? But then my weird boy is stuck out in the open. 
I was kind of hoping that, you know, with all these kills, I was going to stack up additional... Something's um, command points. So I was a little surprised that after losing so many different units that I had just barely had one command point. I was rather shocked by that. It's like, well, let's just use the blind on the tomb blades because they sometimes have trouble just getting attacks on a good day even when they're not blind. And now I've got this issue with these burna boys. It's like, what the hell am I going to do with these guys? The whole point of bringing them was to try to take out immortals and warriors, but I can't even get them into combat because of uh, the poor positioning that I have here with these obstacles. So I'm like, ah, oh, this was a terrible force selection. So learn from my mistakes thus far, because there's a lot of sloppy movements and bad selections here. I was still hoping, like, well, maybe if I can just aggro him to attack me, I can win on the victory points here. Again, not realizing that there's uh, unlimited terms, so stupid, stupid ideas all the way through on this one. Well, let's increase your evasion, I guess. And it's like, well, what am I going to do? Do I bring you over to here? Do I bring you the other way? And it's like, well, let's just bring you there, I guess. And maybe I can get you somewhere, but it's like I just can't overcome these obstacles. I'm like, uh, maybe I can capture this point. If not, I can at least weaken down some of the Scarab forces. So it's like, all right, I've come out ahead with the victory points thus far. Now this was rather shocking to me. He landed both those attacks on that guy with the super high evasion and the partial cover. So I'm quite shocked that that guy ended up getting taken out, actually. Now that was a good move by my opponent here. Obviously, with all that armor, the Burna Boys aren't going to be able to do shit. So to soak up those overwatch shots with the Annihilation Barge is very smart. Because now we can get those warriors in and everybody can be shooting them. Now he's going to drop the nuke on me. That is what I was trying to avoid. So now he should be able to drop all my Ludus here. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just don't see that Kamikaze ability doing much for you. So it's like, alright, I've got Ludas that are almost down, I've lost all these forces, and I still only got one command point. So I'm not quite sure why my forces are not getting good command points, despite having lost over a thousand points of units. I would have thought it would be much higher than what it is. It's, our time. Ready it's like, so my knobs are back here, so now I don't have anything that they can do. Fire. 
it's like, well, let's try to get some heals here. This nice thing and I fail. So it's like, well, I could potentially do upwards of 80 to the tomb blades, because I'm going to have to get Something through here. Because he's effectively blocking that pathway. And did 55. Heal there. It's like we'll sit here. Killed him. Blind the immortals. I had forgotten that I used the heal here, so I was like, oh, I'll run over here with the pain point and get an attack. But I was like, oh shit, I already used your action point on that heal, so that didn't work out. So I'm like, alright, well, maybe you can get some kills then. And it's like, you almost did. But not enough. So I'm like, well, we'll get the Burner Boys taking full cover there, and then maybe I can come over and do something else. But it's like, that's a stupid idea. So let's get the Sluggas over here to do some shooting. We'll bring you up here. And I bring the burners over here thinking, well, at oh, least maybe that'll make it so he has to come to me to get some attacks. We'll pull those guys back, because really the oh, Ludas are the only ones that are can, able to do enough damage. That's a 90% chance to hit, so it's like, well, maybe I can just get the kill here. And I obviously can, but then he resurrects on top of there, so I'm like, shit. So I'm like, well, if I run the war biker over here, we should be able to get this kill. But now I don't have anybody that can capture this point, so it's like, well, this is just a bad idea all around. So I try to bring these Ludas over here to try to take some cover. Keep the weird boy back. Oh, well, hoping those guys are back far enough that they won't just get nuked, but chances are not well. But that's gonna go. So I'm like, well, let's use your sluggas here. Give him a crumpet. And with all the extra shots, I was hoping that was going to be able to kill him. Rocket but the bike is able to do it, so I come down here to lock these guys down. And hopefully my bike there will be able to soak up enough shots that I can hold that spot. Because again, I was still thinking my only hope here is to win on victory points. Because I'm clearly not going to win with killing forces, given that I've taken out maybe 15% of his forces and he's taken out 60% of mine. Now, I think you can make a pretty strong argument that maybe the uh, mech boy would be a really good hero against the Necrons because you will have his little shield to reduce the amount of damage that's dealt to all the surrounding units by 10%, I think, and then 20% for him. But what I tend to find is that between the Death Marks and Locust Heavy Destroyers that most... Uh, enemy players are able to just snipe them down and get the kills. Now that was a good use of Dimensional Gate there. I, I will be honest, I didn't even think about him using Dimensional Gate there. The thing that was a little surprising about that is I didn't realize the explosion only hit certain, only hit five units there. I would have thought it would hit everybody with like a splash of nine or ten. But that is not the case, so... Yeah, he's, excuse, those Locust Heavy Destroyers are really the bane of the Orcs, because they can snipe out, you know, Pain Boys, Weird Boys, or just one round of attacks. Yeah, 
Yeah, so there's another yeah, pain boy cool. down. And that uses annihilation barge to lock that down and to get the kill on my other guys. Now he's bringing his overlord over here to warp behind me and capture that point. Death marks are still up. And again, with all those kills, I still don't have enough uh, to do damage. Now, he must have used the evasion ability here, because I only had like a 60% chance to hit these things. So I was a little surprised by how low that chance to hit was. Ready to boss the boys! It's like, well, let's just take out these warriors. And we'll just bring the knobs over this way. But he should be able to heal a significant amount there because he's accrued so much momentum. And smack there. Run these guys around, but obviously it doesn't really matter at this point in time because he's obviously going to beat me. There's not really anything I can do because now he's got the strategic command points and uh, I has way more forces than I do. So, with that, I think that's going to bring this match to a close. So, got completely curb stomped on this match here. So yeah, Tau Firebase. Definitely want to use ranged units. Melee have a major issue getting into combat there. It's very difficult to tell what is full cover and what is not. I have noticed that even when I've been on the defensive force when I've been shooting guys, it seems like sometimes guys are in full cover and other times it's partial cover. So it's just very difficult with the way uh, they do their cover penalties in this game to know when you're in full cover and when you're not and at what angle it's having significant of effects. Burner boys were definitely a flop on this map. I needed to have a lot more ranged units to be able to get in there. Perhaps the flash gets would have been a much smarter option. Uh, def copters to be able to get in and out and uh, launch some attacks potentially. Um, the war bikes were surprisingly bad on this mission on this map. I thought they would be able to cover a lot more distance, be a lot more difficult to hit, but between the death marks and his locust heavy destroyer, even with their evasion buffs and the partial cover, they still easily got sniped for the most part. So I was rather shocked by that. I don't think doing the uh you know, boys would be very good on this map because, yeah, it's a bunch of range, but then you're starting to get everybody stacked up there and just shot apart from range. Had I taken out that Plasma Mancer, you know, I wouldn't have had my Ludas get nuked so much, and then I could have been maybe doing a little more damage to help keep stacking up that 25% bonus shots. I think if I was going to be doing that with the Flash Kits and everybody else, then maybe I could have uh, done enough damage to really change the course here but definitely you know with all the obstacles to movement my knobs just couldn't quite get into combat i think had i maybe had the knobs in the on the right side there being on the left side i could have used them to at least soak up some more shots but very sloppy pay on my part you know i didn't have the pain boys given the constant hp buffs so it was just a lot of bad decisions a lot of sloppy movements and i was sitting there healing and then forgetting that i used their action point and uh ended up uh getting them in thinking i was gonna be able to attack with their power claw realizing they didn't have the action point and then just had some really bad rolls with their healing ability because it killed models and just didn't let me heal so definitely 
completely outplayed by our opponent here. Uh, the opponent on the other others uh, on the other hand did an excellent job. He had an excellent force selection uh, for this map. You know, he focused on a lot of heavy hover units so he could overcome the obstacles to easily allow him to uh, capture points and preventing me from getting there. I uh, had excellent long range units so he could still get effective shots on target. And then living lightning against orcs is an absolute nightmare. Uh, you think, oh, maybe I'll use the Death Dreads instead, but then the Locust Heavy Destroyers focusing them down tends to easily allow them to shoot down the uh, Death Dreads, which are always difficult, but they do have a lot of movement. So perhaps if you wanted to do like a, a Heavy Flamer build with them with the Scorches and then get them in, um, that would be an alternative option. But Necrons versus Orcs are definitely a very hard match, or Orcs versus Necrons, I should say, are definitely one of the hardest matchups, I think, uh, for the forces, because I, I find that the Necrons are highly effective against the Orcs, and I, I there are a couple of builds that can help your survivability, but on a map like this, it's extremely difficult. So, very well done to our by our opponent here, and I think I definitely left things to... Uh, be improved on in terms of my movement here uh, you know the storm boys you know do you bring more storm boys perhaps but then he would just use his overlord to get in there and chop them down so it's kind of, it's definitely a hard matchup uh, especially with the obstacles because you really just need to close the distance with your units uh, I think the mega knobs are a bad option because they just get shot down by everything with the uh, armor piercing now the living lightning does minimal damage against them but with only three models you know each locust heavy destroyer is going to be dropping one and then the um, death marks would kill the other one so I just don't think they would have been able to get into combat quick enough uh, to make much of a difference there so thanks for watching I hope you're enjoying these videos if you are please give my channel a like and subscribe because we post more content for you have a great day